What's up team? Welcome back to the channel and as you can already tell by the title I am a three-year owner of this lovely Yamaha MT-09 and I'm going to get on the road and give you my thoughts and I'll give you some of my pros and cons of owning this bike. So where should we start? I guess we'll start with the power. These things are... well there's no secret that these things are powerhouses. They have mental amounts of torque hence the MT name, the master of torque, whatever they call it. But it does, it has tons of torque. I mean, I'm in sixth gear now, and if I just open the throttle, it's just instant pull. If I did that in second, it's just wheelie time. Which for some people that's a pro, some that's a con. But that's all down to you and your right hand. That's what she said. <laughs> but the power's awesome. The engine's never let me down, bar the one point we're gonna get to at the end. But it's been a solid engine, a solid platform. It runs like a dream, never misses a beat. But yeah, the engine's flawless, it's powerful enough. You've got rider modes. You probably all know about those. If you don't, you have one, two, and three, and four, sorry. Uh, one being the most abrupt power, four being the least. I live in demo two, so number two is my default. And that's because one makes your throttle halfway is actually 100%. So it can be very snappy, which is more for a racetrack, I guess. I like Demo 2 because it gives a natural full range of throttle and the full power. So it's like the natural way to do it, which gives you more control. Contrary to belief, I don't know why you'd want to sit in Demo 1, because the snappy throttle doesn't make any sense on the street, especially if you're trying to do smooth corners or you're trying to do anything like wheelies and things. It doesn't make sense. But anyway, that's a personal preference. But following on from the performance of the engine comes, I guess, the gearbox. The quick shifter is like butter. Like if I want to go up, as long as the throttle is open, I can just click. If I want to go down, I just let go and just kick down. It's, it's like butter. Watch, I go up. Can you see on the screen? Nothing. That is awesome. And this is my first bike I've had of a quick shifter, so it's kind of going to be hard to go backwards. I'll tell you what, I'm going to find somewhere in a second, pull over, and I'm going to pull that selfie stick thing out more. I can do it on the fly. Just like that. Yeah, boy. Yeah, I'm intrigued to see how this camera comes out. Because if it comes out really good, I'm going to be stoked. Because I definitely want to open the, uh, the opportunities for motorcycle content on this channel. Like, consistent reviews, rides, all kinds of tips. Just everything motorcycles, really. So I'm going to look at getting a drone, especially when the weather gets better out here because New Zealand is beautiful. I mean, this is just a normal back road and it's awesome. You can just go flying down these windies and you come out to the beach. But these are 10 to the dozen in New Zealand. So I think that would be an awesome thing to do is uh, go on road trips with a drone and things and go down the coastlines. And I'm more than happy getting on the camera and doing a bit more like vloggy style stuff too. So we'll see. So let me know what you think. But yeah, back to, uh, back to the bike. What have we got? We've got the power, the engine, obviously performance, like butter, never lets you down. The quick shift is amazing. The clutch, the clutch is awesome. Here's a big one for people. A lot of people have bashed MT-09s over the years and rightly so for their suspension and brakes. And they really have fixed it. From this generation onwards, there's no reason to, unless you really want to, get the SP model. Whereas when I was looking at the older model, my main factor is to get the SP model because I'm not a fan of the colour scheme. I like things all black with the suspension. But I believe there's KYB as standard on this at the moment. That's ample enough for the street. It's never bothered me. I've never had a hiccup. I ride frequently with my girlfriend on the back, so two up. And it's not pogo -y, it's fine. The only way I could see anyone having an argument to say this bike is pogo -y, if they're talking hard out track days. But for the street, no chance. It's fully adjustable. And I think that's a big thing for a lot of people. They don't adjust their suspension or the bike to themselves. And that's another thing I'd like to do a video on is uh, customizing your bike to you. Because a lot of people just buy a bike and ride it straight off the showroom without adjusting for simple things you should be doing like your levers for example my brake and clutch levers I've angled them down a little bit so my fingers don't have to jump over them to reach them it just naturally goes forwards 
see what I mean? It's just comfort. Otherwise, they'd be up here. Oh, it's a bit exaggerated, but you get what I mean. Things like that, though. Things like that, everybody should know. See, this bike is so much fun. <laughs> Woo! Honestly, this is this is what it's about, man. So yeah, the handling is awesome. The straight bars, obviously, very motardy, so they're very comfortable, very upright, which works all round, I think, for me, especially. I enjoy the fact that because they're upright, when you accelerate hard, it feels like you're holding on for dear life. So you have that, and then the flickability. These things go around corners like nothing. They hold a line. Absolutely perfect. Let me let this guy out, because you're gonna blind me, mate. And I don't feel like having to concentrate on talking to you guys and the road and this thing trying to poke me in the eye. So overall, for a full package, this thing's nuts. It's amazing, man. Especially for the price you pay. Like, you're not getting anything anywhere near to what you get on these bikes for the, uh, the value. I'm telling you, man, <laughs> the acceleration on this bike is too much fun. Right, let's get to the last point. Here is my big con. I had a faulty throttle positioning sensor, or a TPS, and that was a pain in my ass. Because out of nowhere, being that these are ride by wire, there's no actual wire in the throttle. It's all electronic and that's controlled by these throttle positioning sensors. There's one in here, I believe, and one down by the engine. They tell you where the throttle is essentially. They correlate your hand position to the engine management. Anyway, mine was faulty, quite common on this one particular model. So my throttle and my idle was all, all over the place, which could have been dangerous, I guess, because it could just unwillingly just tell itself I'm going at more throttle than I was. Luckily, that didn't happen. Just checking the old camera. The only thing I had was my idle would bounce around. And if I was to rev it like this per se with a clutch in, it might die. So the engine would cut out. Or when I'm accelerating from a stop, my hand position wasn't being recognized as smooth. So it would fluctuate. So it would cause me to stall a lot. But yeah, that was it. It was just a pain in the ass. The biggest pain about it was I took it back to the dealership where I bought it. It was certified Yamaha approved dealership, I guess. That's the best way of saying it. So I took it to them. They knew about it, but couldn't tell me what was wrong with it. It didn't make any sense. So they basically just cleared the fault code and gave the bike back. And they charged me a fair bit for that too. That's the bit that annoyed me. So I got the bike back. Two, three days later, engine lights back on. TPS is going mental. So I take it back. They still can't find the problem. So I take it to another shop. The other shop diagnoses it straight away, gets his multimeters out. He's a bit more of a uh, race specific mechanic camera's all good so he uh, went in there a bit more manually with his uh, multimeter and tested both of the TPS sensors and found that the one down here by the engine was bouncing outside of its normal range so once I knew that I knew what to do so I ordered a TPS I got the newer updated version which cancelled out all the problems and the bonus was when I got my bike tuned they had to open the bike up anyway to get to it, so they just fitted it for me for next to nothing. So it worked out in the end, just kind of disappointed that Yamaha, back and forth with the dealership and their emails to Yamaha, couldn't just sort it out there and then with a bike that was pretty much brand new and that was a known fault. Anyway, that's pretty much all I have to say on it. Thank you guys for watching. I'm gonna bring more content to this channel as I go. So with that being said, please like, comment, subscribe, do all the good stuff, help me out. It really does mean everything. So thanks for watching, I'll see you guys in the next one. Adios, goodbye, 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 goodbye.